pseudotumor cerebri. And what this is essentially is a very interesting situation in which a patient has increased intracranial pressure. And this intracranial pressure, once it is increased, is also given the term intracranial hypertension. Now, normally what happens anytime a person has elevated intracranial pressure is that you're very suspicious of some sort of mass or tumor or even hydrocephalus. So you do the appropriate imaging, you know, the MRI or the CT of the head, and you'll probably find one of these. But in pseudotumor cerebri, you don't have any of them. There's no mass, there's no tumor, there's no hydrocephalus. So why then does this person have increased intracranial pressure? Well, most commonly it's due to the fact that there is an obstruction of the venous drainage. And also, this is involving impaired reabsorption of the CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So remember, uh, that is the clinical picture. No mass, no tumor, no hydrocephalus, but you will have this as the reason. So what kind of patients does this occur in? It occurs mostly in women who are of childbearing age and then it also tends to occur in greater uh, numbers in women who are obese. So these are the two uh, populations that it tends to occur the most in. In terms of symptomatology, it really has all the symptoms of a brain tumor. Someone presents with a headache and they also present with nausea and they also have vision problems and you think well this is very suspicious for a brain tumor but they don't have a tumor and then also on physical exam you see papilledema which is a very common uh, physical exam finding uh, when somebody has increased intracranial pressure and papilledema for those of you who don't know is the swelling of those optic discs that can be pretty characteristic on a physical exam now unfortunately the most serious complication of pseudotumor cerebri involves the vision and it involves vision loss and that is the most serious complication that can occur in terms of diagnosis first of course you do imaging of the head for example an MRI and that will be normal there's no tumor there's no mass there's no uh, hydrocephalus then you will do a test called an MRV. What is that? Well, it's magnetic resonance venography. And this, of course, from the name, you can deduce that it looks at the veins. And what you will see is a stenosis of the transverse sinuses. And that is contributing to this intracranial pressure being elevated. And then the final test that you can do as part of the workup is a lumbar puncture. Now, of course, the patient doesn't have meningitis, so the CSF is completely normal. CSF is normal. But you will have elevated opening pressure, which is a characteristic sign of increased intracranial pressure. So how do you treat this? Well, the aim is to reduce that intra cranial pressure and that is done with a diuretic and that diuretic is acetazolamide and that's the drug that you use and also studies have shown that weight loss can also help reduce intracranial pressure so let's take a look at a couple of vignettes see what this looks like a moderately obese 14-year-old girl has a two-week history of severe bifrontal headaches and early morning vomiting. She appears alert and is cooperative. She is right-handed. Her pulse is 82. Blood pressure is 112 over 76. Fundoscopy results are shown. Her visual acuity is 20-20 bilaterally. Neuro exam and CT of the head show no abnormalities, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, she's got all the symptoms of a tumor 
but the CT showed nothing. So the vomiting and the headaches are basically a sign of increased intracranial pressure, but there is no tumor. So C's out, and most commonly in this kind of a scenario, especially the fact that she's obese, the most likely diagnosis is probably D, pseudoterminal cerebrae. Next question. 17-year-old girl who's obese comes to the office because of a bifrontal non-throbbing headache that has been worsening over the past six months. It wakes her up from her sleep, but it improves if she gets up and walks around. She also says that her vision is not as good as it used to be, but cannot give you more details. Exam is significant for mild optic disc blurring. She went to the local emergency department five days earlier with similar complaints, and an MRI of the head was performed and was reported as normal. The most appropriate next step is... It was a classic scenario of someone with um, headache and vision problems and then they did the imaging and it was normal. So if that's normal, the next step would probably be an MRV, a magnetic resonance venography, or a lumbar puncture. And of those two, the only choices given is the lumbar puncture. And the lumbar puncture would show elevated opening pressure. And finally, 32-year-old white female presents with six-week history of headache uh, increasing and uh, the only abnormal finding on exam is a BMI of 32. A neuro exam is normal, CT of the head is normal, and a lumbar puncture is remarkable only for increased CSF fluid pressure. There's no history of trauma or hypercoagulable disorder. Management should be directed toward preventing which of the following. Well, again, classic for pseudotorium or cerebri. They give you the symptoms, they tell you that she's obese, CT is normal, lumbar puncture shows the classic sign of increased intracranial pressure, and the most serious complication or consequence that you want to prevent is vision loss. So the answer would be A.